everyone. Happy evening. A very good evening. Welcome to our today's YouTube live session. But before that, let me tell you that this is the new setup that you can see. And I'll tell you about this. But before that, tell me whether the audio visual is good. Yeah, guys, is the audio visual all good so that we can proceed with the session? All right. So, this is a new setup. I am trying it for the first time. So, I do anticipate some glitches, some hiccups because this is the first time that we are using this setup. But I am sure that with time, like everything with practice, it grows better and I am sure with each session it would grow better. And do let me know your feedback at the end of the session. How did you find the session with this setup? So, I think this is going to give you a more of a live class like feeling. So, even sitting at your home, you can feel like you are attending the live offline sessions, right? So... Yes, absolutely, Parul. That is what I said. So, we at an academy keep working on that to make you feel that even at home you are attending the live sessions, you are not missing on anything. You can attend it at the comfort of your homes, right? So, in the today's session, we are basically going to discuss the ENT flashcards. Now, why ENT? Because in the revision timetable that we are following on our Telegram group, it is ENT for today, right? So, I thought let me help you in the daily target and, and the night session will help you in the revision as well. It will help you in the assessment, right? So, this session, Vidushi, is for everyone, be it FMG, be it NEET PG. It is the essentials points in the ENT subject that we are going to discuss. The paranasal sinuses anatomy, the CT part of it, the important signs and everything, all right? So, yes. Let me tell you about the platform first. I am sure we do have some new students here. Many of you are connected with us since a long time, but there might be some new students as well who would like to know about the platform. So, Unacademy Plus subscription is a subscription which gives you access to all the structured courses on the platform. And many students keep asking, if we take a subscription, is it only one batch? that we can attend? No, it is all the batches that are there on the platform. Any educator, any combined batch, you are free to attend. Even the previous batches that we have had, the MCQ marathons and everything you can attend when you have had the, once you have had the plus subscription. After that, the iconic subscription is something which is the combination of an academy and prep ladder. So, you get the best of both the live and the recorded platform. Then you have your Okay, so we have this offer uh, coming up, which is the three months plus one month free subscription that we have. Your one month extra subscription would be credited within 30 days. So I am also getting queries for that. We took a subscription, but one month extra nahi aya because it will take approximately within a span of 30 days. It would be credited to your account. All right. The interesting thing on the platform is we are starting with the prof batches with the which will cater to the university exam and the next exam as well. And we are starting with the first year MBBS prof batch. So if you have your younger siblings, you have your juniors, you know, getting into MBBS, make sure they make the best use of this platform. The NEET PG students who are appearing in 2021, this is a batch which is uh, starting on 12th on May, the season 1 batch. For the NEET PG, in the season 1, you will have the case-based high yield topic revisions, then you will have the clinical subject test. Season 2 will be more of image-based and in season 3, you will have the subject-wise test and discussion. So basically, you get everything, the last minute revision that you need. Plus, we also have the FMG test and analysis batch 
which is going to start on 12th on May. All right. The next 2022 students, there's something in store for you as well. We are starting with a new batch on 12th of May and you have all the subjects being covered. It's starting on 12th of May. I would be starting with the radiology subject. I hope all of you know that I've done my MD in radiology. So I'll be starting with the radiology batch on 12th of May, five days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday and Tuesday. And we would be completing entire radiology with all the core concepts. And I'm pretty sure that all your fear of the black and white of radiology will go away with that course. So let us start with this. Why do you need to download the Unacademy app is because the free live sessions, the plus subscription classes you can see on the Unacademy app. And whenever you are attending any free sessions on the platform, you can use my code Dr. Nikita live, right? I'm sure all of you know the code. And whenever you are subscribing as well, you can use the code Dr. Nikita live for the additional discount while subscribing. That said and done, I'm sure you are waiting for the session to start and here it goes. This is the first slide that we have. Identify this x-ray view, the paranasal sinuses x-ray views. We have discussed it before. This is just an overview, the important points that we are going to see. So what do you think which x-ray view is this? Absolutely right. This is your, this is your water's view. What is the water's view? The nose chin method. You can see here the chin touching the image receptor. That is the water's view. All right. So this is the water's view that we see. Next x-ray view. What do you think is this x-ray view here? Which x-ray view is this? So here we are seeing that it is the forehead and the nose. It is the forehead. So obviously, if I ask you for which paranasal sinus is this x-ray view the best, you can see that it is going in the frontal region, occipitofrontal, that is your Cardwell view, right? So this x-ray view is your Cardwell view and it is the best x-ray view for your frontal sinus, right? It's the best x-ray view for frontal sinus. So x-ray view, this is best for frontal sinus. Next one, look at this CT scan, okay, the axial CT, you have the axial CT. Look at the arrows marked here. Tell me what do you think is the diagnosis here? So particularly this part, what do you see here? What is this thing that you are seeing here? Right. This is, we can see now, look at the anatomy. Okay, look at the anatomy. This is the maxillary sinus here. This is the maxillary sinus here. This is the maxillary sinus here. When do we say that the sinus is normal? When it has air in it, right? But here we see that the maxillary sinus, both of them, this has only partial air. This is the black color air that we see here. That part is normal, but this is not normal. So that's a mucus retention polyp in the right maxillary sinus on the left side okay in radiology your right is the patient's left so on the left side we can see this soft tissue mass which is in the maxillary sinus and it is extending into the posterior nerve which is the coena so this is the maxillary antrum this is the coena so this is the anthrocoenal polyp right this is the anthrocoenal polyp can someone tell me that sign we have discussed in special class on your x-ray neck line which helps you differentiate is it working now guys or there's still a problem Yes. So tell me that x-ray sign which helps you differentiate between the anthrocoenal polyp and the angiofibroma. Which is that sign on the x-ray which helps you differentiate anthrocoenal polyp from the angiofibroma? Which sign is that? 
very good sahitya absolutely right that is called as the dodge sign right that is called as the dodge sign right so if you see a crescent of air when your entrocoinal polyp is going into the coina into the nasopharynx you will see a air between the posterior nasopharyngeal wall and the polyp but your angiofibroma arising from there itself there won't be the air so remember that it is your okay it is your dodge sign holman miller sign guys where do you see the holman miller sign holman miller sign on your x ray on your ct you will have the posterior bowing of the maxillary sinus i agree to it that is also a sign but i particularly asked a sign on the lateral neck x ray lateral neck x ray right chalo next one let us go to the next slide now okay so this is your entrocoenal polyp what do you think is the diagnosis here what do you think is the diagnosis in this image so what do we see here is what do we see here is you can see this hyperdensities hyperdensities within the sinuses these hyperdensities within the sinuses the sinuses are expanded that is leading to your hypertelorism a recent neat pg question this is your fungal sinusitis right this is your allergic fungal sinusitis where you see this double density under you will see more dense and bahar you have the soft tissue density so that is your fungal sinusitis okay that is your fungal sinusitis very very important next one now this is now coming to the paranasal sinuses ct scan anatomy tell me what do you see here what are the arrows pointing to what is this structure here what structure is this okay before identifying that structure look at this structure what is this structure here no this is not bulla ethmoidalis this is not your uncinate process so i think we need to get to the basics of your paranasal sinuses anatomy yes this bone which you are seeing here this bone which you are seeing here this is the inferior turbinate all right this is the inferior turbinate here uske upar this one is your middle turbinate okay inferior turbinate ke upar that is the middle turbinate now what is abnormal in this middle turbinate look at the inferior turbinate does it have any air does it have any air no your bone should not have any air here the turbinate bone but in the middle turbinate we are seeing this black color air right we are seeing the black color air so this is called as your what is this called as this is called as your conca bullosa okay this is your conca bullosa when you see air in the middle turbinate okay when you see air in the middle turbinate that is your conca bullosa if if it grows very wide it can obstruct the drainage of the sinuses and that is how it can lead to your sinusitis that is why as radiologist when we report the paranasal sinus ka ct we have to report all this anatomical variations which can contribute to the etiology of sinusitis which can also affect can you know the ent surgeon can face difficulty during the fest procedure so all this we need to mention in the ct report of paranasal sinuses next one what do you think is this arrow pointing to what is this image showing so this is the cell this is the cell that we are seeing this is the orbit here right this is the orbit here this is the cell which we are seeing in the infra orbital location what cell is this in the infra orbital location yes that is called as your haller cell right that is called as your haller cell very important again asked recently this is your heller cell okay this is your heller cell next image let us go to the next image this is heller cell 
nasolacrimal duct opens into which meatus nasolacrimal duct opens into your inferior meatus right it opens into the inferior meatus how do we remember that how do we remember that nasolacrimal duct it opens into the inferior meatus remember the mnemonic is india right the mnemonic is india that is your nasolacrimal duct opens into the inferior meatus okay so india is the mnemonic to remember for nasolacrimal duct opens into the inferior meatus next one what is the direction of the nasolacrimal duct agar nasi ono db aa rahe hain all the cells i'll be discussing don't worry about that we'll be discussing all the cells what is the direction of the nasolacrimal duct so the nasolacrimal duct goes downward of course it goes downward it goes laterally and it goes backward so remember it is like this so it goes downward laterally and backwards even you get a question on this so remember it's downwards lateral and backwards next one is this a true statement or a false statement that the valve of hasner is present at the upper end of the nasolacrimal duct this is a false statement right this is a false statement because the valve is present at the lower end so the nasolacrimal duct goes like this downward laterally and backwards you have the valve of hasner present at the lower end of the nasolacrimal duct not at the upper end all right next one what is the circled area shown here what do we call this area in the paranasal sinuses very very important to comment upon in the report of paranasal sinuses ct what is the circled area here absolutely right that is your osteomeatal complex or the osteomeatal unit okay this is called as osteomeatal complex or the osteomeatal unit now what all comes in this omc okay what all comes in this omc so in this osteomeatal unit look at this one this is your osteomeatal unit what all we have here is what all we have here is this is your maxillary sinus let me change the pen color all right this is your maxillary sinus here right this is the maxillary sinus this is where the maxillary sinus is opening so this one is your maxillary ostium right this one is your maxillary ostium then this which you see is the infundibulum uske aage ye jo aapko dikh raha hai this is called as the infundibulum now what do you see infundibulum ke baju mein this bone which you see this bone here this bone is called as the uncinate process all right that's the uncinate process there this is the inferior turbinate this is the middle turbinate look at the normal middle turbinate it does not have any air so there is no concha bullosa this which you see from the inferior turbinate coming upwards that is the uncinate process right uncinate process ke laterally is your infundibulum medially between the middle turbinate and the uncinate you have your this is the yellow one is your middle meatus okay this is your middle meatus and the semi lunar shape the moon shape here this is called as your hiatus semi lunaris okay this is called as your hiatus semi lunaris so this entire area here is called as your osteomeatal unit or the osteomeatal complex all right let us revise this anatomy very very important so this is the maxillary sinus here this is the ostium of the maxillary sinus this is the infundibulum hiatus semi lunaris this is the middle meatus right that's the middle meatus and this one is the uncinate process coming from the inferior turbinate this is your uncinate process here can someone tell me what is this structure here what is this air fill structure here lateral to the orbit lateral to this uncinate process what is that structure there very correct preeti that is your that is your bulla ethmoidalis okay that is your bulla ethmoidalis 
Now, what is bulla ethmoidalis? A large anterior ethmoidal cell. It's a consistent cell. Even your agar nasi is your anterior most ethmoidal cell. But agar nasi can be present, cannot be present. Bulla ethmoidalis is consistently present. All right. Okay. Just give me a second, guys. <laughs> so yes there was my daughter giving the debut appearance in the new setup uh, sorry for that interruption right so that is the bulla ethmoidalis right let us go to the next one okay so this is again the reinforcement of the anatomy that we have learned so can you identify the structures i hope it is easy now this bone which you see here, that is the uncinate process. This air fill structure that I show you, that is the bulla ethmoidalis, right? The ethmoidal bulla. This one which we see here, that is the middle turbinate. And yaha pe jo dikhra hai, that is the middle meatus, right? That is the middle meatus. This is the uncinate process. Is this anatomy, CT anatomy particularly clear with everyone? Is the city anatomy clear with everyone? Right? Let us go to the next one. Okay, let us go to the next one. Now, if I label the structures, this is the structure labeled 1, this is the structure labeled 2, this is the structure labeled 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now tell me which of these represents your uncinate process? Which of these represents your uncinate process? Absolutely right. Very correct. So, this bone which you see here, this is the inferior turbinate here. This one is your uncinate process. So, the bone number 5 is your uncinate process. This is the maxillary sinus. This is the ostium. This is the infundibulum, hiatus semilunaris and the middle meatus. Okay. And the middle meatus. Now, tell me what all sinuses open into the middle meatus. What all sinuses open into the middle meatus. The mnemonic to remember that is your frame M, right? It is your frame M. That is your frontal sinus, anterior middle ethmoid and your maxillary sinus. So, basically, at the osteomiatal unit, it has your frame M, frontal, anterior middle ethmoid and your maxillary sinus, okay? And your maxillary sinus. Next one, uncinate process, we have seen. Now, look at this anatomy. Okay, look at this anatomy. You can get these images as well. So, what do we see here is these bones that you are seeing, right? These bones that you are seeing. This is the inferior turbinate. This is the middle turbinate and this is the superior turbinate, right? That's the superior turbinate. This one here, right below the pituitary gland, below the cella is your sphenoid sinus. Okay, that is your sphenoid sinus. So, this cell which you see, the posterior most ethmoidal cell, right? The posterior most ethmoidal cell, this one which you see here, let me change the ink color here. All right. So, this cell which you see here, this cells which you see here, this is the sphenoid sinus, right? This is the sphenoid sinus, sabse piche jo aata hai. These soft tissue structures here, related to the sphenoid sinus, the superolateral wall, that is your optic nerve and this is the posterior most ethmoidal cell in relation to the optic nerve. Those are your onodi cell. Absolutely right. So, those are your onodi cells. Remember, the trick is onodi is O-N, right? Your onodi cell is related to the optic nerve, okay? That is related to the optic nerve. Optic nerve, sphenoid sinus. So, it is in relation to the sphenoid sinus. Okay, it is in relation to the sphenoid sinus. So, this is the onodi cell. Next is pe chalte hai. The next one. Let me label this for you. Let me label this for you. What is this image showing? Before identifying that, let us identify this. I think this is relatively easy. What is this structure here? What is this structure? Sphenoid 
So look at the anatomy. It looks like your bulla ethmoidalis. But are you seeing your osteomyatal unit in this plane? When you take the coronal plane along with bulla ethmoidalis, there will be your osteomyatal unit. This section is in front of that as well. Okay, it is right in the anteriorly. So this one is your frontal sinus. Okay, this one is your frontal sinus. The anterior most ethmoid cell, the anterior most ethmoidal cell, जो आपका frontal recess के relation में है, antero inferior to the frontal recess, this is called as your agar nasi cell. Okay, this is called as your agar nasi. Again, a recently asked question. I'll show you another image of agar nasi. Okay, so that is your agar nasi cell here. Remember, below the frontal sinus, anterior most. This is how the image was asked in one of the recent exam. Okay, how do you identify this agar nasi cell? Okay, so this one is your frontal sinus. Okay, this one is your frontal sinus. This is where you have the frontal ostium, the infundibulum coming here. You have the frontal recess. The cell which is present anterior to the frontal recess, that is what is called as your agar nasi cell. So remember agar nasi, that is anterior nasal. So it is just close to the nose. It is anterior most ethmoidal cell, right? This is your anterior most ethmoidal cell. Remember it is present anterior to the frontal recess. Okay, it is present anterior to the frontal recess. Can someone identify this structure here? What is this structure here? Yes, this is your sphenoid sinus. This is your cella. Okay, that is why for the pituitary lesions, we go the transphenoidal route, right? We go through the transphenoidal route. Okay, so that is your agar nasi. Please remember that's your agar nasi there. Next one, let us see the next one. Okay, so what sinus opens into the superior meatus? Middle meatus we saw. Middle meatus is frame M. What, ap what opens into the superior meatus? Anyone, what opens into the superior meatus? What opens into the superior meatus? Absolutely right. So remember superior matlab PE, so that is your posterior ethmoid, okay. Frame M, we saw the anterior and middle ethmoid into the middle, posterior ethmoid is in the superior, okay. Posterior ethmoid is in the superior meatus. Next one, so these are the structures opening into the various meatus. Inferior meatus, nasolacrimal duct, India humne mnemonic dekha. Middle meatus, frontal sinus, maxillary sinus, anterior ethmoid, all of these together form the osteomyatal complex or it is called as the picardal circle. Okay, or it is called as the circle which I had drawn, that is the picardal circle. Superior meatus is your posterior ethmoid and sphenoethmoidal recess is where your sphenoid sinus opens. Okay, your sphenoid sinus opens into the Sphenoethmoidal recess. All right. Let us see the next one. Okay. Which are the sinuses which are present at birth? Which sinuses are present at birth? So that is your me. Okay. Remember M and E. So me is present at birth. Who is present at birth? Me is present at birth. So that is your maxillary and ethmoid. Okay, maxillary and ethmoid. Even the sphenoid is not present at birth. All right. Next one, which is the last to be seen on x-ray? Which is the last to be seen on x-ray? Yes, that is your frontal. Okay, the frontal sinus is the last to be seen on x-ray. Radiologically, it is the frontal. So, this is your table from your reference books regarding the sinuses. So, remember that present at birth, present at birth is me. That is maxillary and ethmoid. Okay, maxillary and ethmoid is present at birth. Frontal and sphenoid are not present at birth. Your first radiological evidence, latest six years, is for your frontal sinus. Okay, frontal sinus is six years. 
So that is the last to be seen on x-ray. Okay, that is the last to be seen on x-ray. Next one. First of all, identify this radiological investigation. What is this? What investigation is this? Yes, Nishu, absolutely right. So, Soumya, this is not the Phelps sign. Soumya, where do we see the Phelps sign? Phelps sign is seen in your glomus tumor where you have the jugular spine which is eroded, right? This one is your DSA. Guys, this is not your CT angiography. This is your digital subtraction angiography. Why? CT angio, remember that always the contrast, the vessels will be white. DSA, your vessels can look black like this. Okay, in the DSA, the vessels can look black. All right. So, this is your DSA because the vessels are looking black because DSA is done in fluoroscopy. The contrast can look black. And this is where you see the bifurcation of the carotid. This is the separation, the splaying of the internal and the external carotid. Because you see a vascular tumor here, right? You see the black, black contrast. There is a vascular tumor lying at the bifurcation of the carotid, common carotid. That is your carotid body tumor. That is your chemodectoma, right? That is your chemodectoma. And this sign is called as your, this is your liar's sign, right? This is your liar sign where you see the splaying of the internal and the external carotid. Okay, that's your carotid body tumor. Next one, so that is liar's sign, carotid body. Identify this one, a very, very important image asked very frequently. What do we see here? This is the omega shaped, right? This is the omega shape. What does that tell you? Yes, that is your laryngomalacia. Okay, that is the omega shape. That is the laryngomalacia. So omega sign, laryngomalacia. What do we see in this image? Again, one of the recently asked questions. What do we see here is, look at this airway column, look at the narrowing here, look at the pointed part that we see here, like the steeple of the church. So this is called as the steeple sign, right? This is your steeple sign. Now this steeple sign, you can see the narrowing is in the airways right the narrowing is in the airways the larynx the trachea and the bronchi they get inflamed and they get narrowed so this is seen in your laryngotracheobronchitis which is also called as croup right it is also called as croup so steeple sign it is your laryngotracheobronchitis next one when we see your laryngotracheobronchitis we need to see this sign as well which is your thumb sign right this is the epiglottis which is inflamed so that is your epiglottitis thumb sign remember the thumb sign you will get the lateral x-ray right you will get the lateral x-ray for your steeple sign it will be the frontal radiograph so that is the another important clue a cheat code to differentiate the two epiglottitis thumb sign where do we see the keyhole glottis where do we see the keyhole glottis? So keyhole, we know that keyhole looks like this. Where do we see the keyhole glottis? Very good case of that is your phone asthenia, right? It is seen in your phone asthenia. Abhi keyhole dekha hai, to baki ke keyhole dekh lete hai. Where do we see the rest of the keyhole? Where do we see the keyhole appearance of the urinary bladder? And where do we see the keyhole appearance in the brain? MRI brain, antenatal ultrasound brain. Where do we see the keyhole appearance of the urinary bladder and the keyhole appearance of the brain? Absolutely right. The urinary bladder, it is your posterior urethral valve, right? The posterior urethral valve causes the keyhole appearance of the bladder. And in the brain, it is your where do we see the keyhole appearance? You have the fourth ventricle, you have the posterior fossa cyst which communicates with the fourth ventricle that is your. So you have the fourth ventricle and communicating with this, it's a large posterior fossa cyst. 
So I'm giving you a major clue that the posterior fossa is enlarged. Nein. So in your Arnold Chiari, it is your small posterior fossa. In your Dandy Walker, it is your large posterior fossa, right? So that is your Dandy Walker malformation. Okay, that is your Dandy Walker malformation. All right. Next wala chalte hai. Turban glottis. Where do we see the turban glottis? Turban glottis. Remember T for T. That is your tuberculosis. All right. That is seen in tuberculosis. So remember turban glottis is seen in your tuberculosis. Mayer's cotton grading. In which condition do we use the Mayer's cotton grading? Mayer's cotton grading. Again, a recent question. It is used for subglottic stenosis. Remember, it is used for subglottic stenosis. Mayer's cotton grading is used for subglottic stenosis. Next one. What do you think is the diagnosis in this image? I'm sorry for that. The image is not very clear, but I hope you guys are smart. You know that you get worse images than this in your uh, real final exam as well. So I'm sure this image is at least better than that. Right. So you are seeing a dip. This is where we are seeing the dip. And this is your 4000 hertz, right? This is your 4000 hertz pay dip. Absolutely right. That is your noise induced hearing loss, right? That is your noise induced hearing loss. It classically shows a dip at 4000 ballers notch. Absolutely. And what is the Karhat's notch? Karhat's notch. Karhat's notch is seen at your 2000 hertz, right? It is seen at your 2000 hertz. Let me go back. Yes. So Karhat's notch is seen a dip at 2000 hertz. Remember, it is a dip in your bone conduction. Okay. It is a dip in bone conduction at 2000 hertz. And this is how it is. Okay. So this is where we are seeing the dip in the bone conduction at your 2000 hertz. Karhat's notch, this is your otosclerosis. So remember two important otosclerosis, 2000 bone conduction, noise induced hearing loss is at 4000. It is your baller's notch. Next one, where do we place the electrode in the cochlear implant? Is it your scalar media or is it your scalar tympani? Kaha dalte hai electrode in a cochlear implant? Absolutely right. So that is your scalar tympani. So remember that electrode is placed in your scalar tympani, not your scalar media. Okay. So this is where you can see that. Ye hai aapka cochlea mein jo electrode hai. And look at the electrode here. It is placed in the scalar tympani, not in your scalar media. Okay. It is placed in the scalar tympani. Which is the safety muscle of the larynx? Which is the safety muscle of the larynx? The only abductor of the vocal cords. Which is the only abductor of the vocal cords? Absolutely right. That is your posterior cricoarytenoid. Okay. That is your posterior cricoarytenoid. To remember, remember that posterior pulleys protects us from the abductors. Right. Pulleys protects us from the abductors. That is the kidnappers, right? That is the kidnappers. So it is the posterior, not the lateral cricoarytenoid, which is the only abductor of the vocal cords. Okay, the only abductor of the vocal cords. What is the length of the eustachian tube? Next question. What is the length of the eustachian tube? 12 millimeters, 24, 36, 48. Okay, tell me the length of both, the external auditory canal and the eustachian tube. What, tell me the length of both. Which one is longer out of the two? You have the external auditory canal. You have the eustachian tube. All right. Let me show you the image. It is 36 millimeter. Let me show you the image. 
So look at the external auditory canal. It is horizontal. Your eustachian tube is diagonal. So that is more long. Okay, that is more long. So external auditory canal is 24 millimeter. This one is your 36 millimeters. Look at the bony part. Look at the cartilaginous part. So remember the trick is you have the external auditory canal. It goes into your middle ear. Basically, for middle ear, aata hai, fid eustachian tube. Aata hai. The part which is close to the middle ear, that is your cartilaginous part or the bony part. Which part is that? So this is where you have the middle ear cavity. This is where you have the middle ear cavity. So this part close to the middle ear, that is your bony part. Okay, that is your bony part. EAC ka bahar ka part, cartilaginous, we can move it, bony part andar wala. So eustachian tube ka bhi, the lateral wala part is your bony part. The medial part is your cartilaginous part. The thing is, eustachian tube is predominantly cartilaginous. It has to close and open, close and open. So it is more mobile. Remember, it's more cartilaginous. While your, while your EAC is predominantly bony. So, two-third of EAC is bony, two-third of eustachian tube is cartilaginous, okay? And the part which is near the middle ear in both of them, that is the bony part. Two-third in the EAC, one-third in the eustachian tube, okay? One-third in the eustachian tube. Next one, which is the cranial nerve which is involved in your gray Dinigo syndrome? Is it your cranial nerve? Two, three, four, five, six. Which cranial nerve is involved in your Gray-Dinigo syndrome? What is Gray-Dinigo syndrome? It is your petrous apicitis, right? So you have the petrous bone, you have the petrous bone, you have the inflammation at the petrous apex, that is your petrous apicitis. So which cranial nerve? 5 and 6. What is the triad of Gray-Dinigo? Remember, the triad of Gray-Dinigo is your 3 Ds. Which are the 3 Ds? Discharge, diplopia, and your deep pain. So you have discharge, you have diplopia, and you have deep pain. Okay. So diplopia means it is the sixth nerve, the lateral rectus which is gone. Deep pain is your trigeminal nerve, right? It's your trigeminal nerve which carries the pain sensation from the face. So that's your cranial nerve five and six. Anytime a patient of CSOM even if after operation, the patient still has discharge, persistent ear discharge, think of the petrous apicitis. Okay, the persistent ear discharge after surgery, petrous apicitis is a top differential. Okay, petrous apicitis is a top differential. So remember the three Ds are discharge, diplopia and deep pain. Okay, discharge, diplopia and deep pain. Next one. Which is the internal carotid artery branch in the littles area? First tell me where is the littles area? Where is the littles area? Is it antero superior, antero inferior, postero superior or postero inferior? Where is the littles area located? Absolutely right. So if this is the nasal septum, this is anterior, this is posterior. So antero inferior is where you have the littles area, the Kieselbeck's plexus. The only branch from the internal carotid that is your anterior ethmoidal artery. So look at the internal carotid artery. It gives the ophthalmic artery. Ophthalmic artery se aata hai anterior ethmoidal artery. So, this anterior ethmoidal artery is what is coming to your littles area located antero inferiorly. Rest of the branches are from the external carotid. Okay. So, you have the facial artery ka superior labial branch, you have the greater palatine artery, and you have your sphenopalatine artery. Okay. And you have the sphenopalatine artery, which is the most common artery responsible for epistaxis both in the anterior and posterior, that is your sphenopalatine artery. Remember, sphenopalatine artery is most commonly involved in epistaxis, okay? Elderly patient with unilateral serous otitis media. 
why is there serous otitis media fluid accumulating why is the fluid accumulating eustachian tube is blocked why is the eustachian tube blocked because of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma so any time they give you elderly patient with unilateral serous otitis media always think of nasopharyngeal carcinoma what is the most common manifestation of nasopharyngeal carcinoma how does nasopharyngeal carcinoma manifest that is the most common is your cervical lymph nodes right the most common is your cervical lymph nodes the most common manifestation is your cervical lymphadenopathy what is the triad that we see in your uh, what is the triad that we see in your nasopharyngeal carcinoma what triad do we see in nasopharyngeal carcinoma so the trick is nasopharyngeal is like a mass in the nasopharynx imagine like it is causing throttling so that is your trotter's triad what are the three components of trotter's triad that is your n p and c that is your neuralgia the trigeminal you have the palatal paralysis right p for palatal paralysis and c for conductive hearing loss remember in trotters because of the eustachian tube block the serous otitis media there is your conductive hearing loss not your sensory neural hearing loss very very important point generally they give you which of the following is not a component of trotter's triad it is your sensory neural hearing loss because it causes your conductive hearing loss all right next one i just now told you most common artery involved in both anterior and posterior epistaxis which one is that that is your sphenopalatine artery right that's your sphenopalatine artery sphenopalatine artery where is it located at what end of what turbinate is it located at anterior end of superior turbinate posterior end of superior turbinate anterior end of middle turbinate where is it located absolutely right it is located at the posterior end it is located at the posterior end of the middle turbinate okay it is located at the posterior end of the middle turbinate cortel's test bata diya maine aapko so this is the image this test cortel's test very very frequently asked this cortel's test is done to look for the patency of the nasal valve whether the surgery for dns will it be successful or not successful so basically the cortel's test is done in your patient of dns to look for nasal valve patency okay to look for nasal valve patency what is the diagnosis in this case this is where you see the swelling this is where you see the redness this is in your submandibular region the cellulite is happening there that is your ludwig's angina okay so this is the question which is asked so ludwig's angina is basically involvement of the submandibular space okay submandibular space jelly's test is positive in otosclerosis true or false Jelly's test is positive in otosclerosis. Is it true or is it false? No. Please remember, guys, that this is a false statement. Your normal Jelly's test, ENT में आप देखोगे बहुत सारी tests. The normal tests are the positive test. So Jelly's test is positive normally. In otosclerosis, it is negative. Okay, in otosclerosis, it is negative. So remember, like jellies is like a gel, and you have fixed the stapes. Otosclerosis stapes fix हो गया है. So gel से you have fixed the stapes. So it is negative in your otosclerosis. It is positive in normal subjects and in SNHL. Okay, it is positive normally and in SNHL. very very frequently asked it is negative in your it is negative in your otosclerosis right in which condition do we see the lighthouse sign which condition do we see the lighthouse sign
Lighthouse sign is seen in your mastoiditis. So there is the reservoir of pus, like a lighthouse. Lighthouse ka light kaise, you know, pulsate karta hai. You have the pus coming out. Okay, you have the pus coming out, like a pulsating pus, the pus coming out. So remember the lighthouse sign is the reservoir of pus that is seen in your mastoiditis. And where do we see the brown sign? Brown sign, when you give the pressure with the seagull speculum, you see the blanching of the eardrum because of the glomus tumor. The increased vascularity, the arteries, when you give the pressure, blanching hone lagta hai. So, brown sign is seen in your glomus tumor. Okay, brown sign is seen in your glomus tumor. Brown sign. Glomus tumor mein, CT scan mein dusra sign, which someone of you just mentioned. That is your Phelps sign. Okay. That is your Phelps sign in your glomus tumor where you have the erosion of the jugular spine. Okay. Where you have the erosion of the jugular spine. That is the Phelps sign in glomus tumor. Okay. That's the Phelps sign in your glomus tumor. All right. So that was about your that was about your flashcards. Some important quick revision in ENT. I know this is like just a minor portion, but we have tried to do our best in this limited amount of time. Bahat sari cheese, rapid revision kiya hai. And I hope this helps you, uh, uh, you know, remember the various important points in ENT. And uh, yes, there are many other signs. There are n number of signs in ENT that you would come across. And guys, do let me know how did you find the session? How did you find the setup? And uh, as I told you with time, it will grow better. Utne hi curves glitches nahi hai, jitna I was expecting. But yes, more areas to be worked upon. And uh, thank you so much for joining in. We'll meet again every day. Let me tell you the plan for the month. Every day we are going to meet for free live classes. 5 p.m. on the Unacademy app. You need to download the app for that. And when you are joining in the class, if asked for a code, use the code Dr. Nikita Life. Tomorrow, we 5 p.m. Generally, we have the Con Banega MD episodes, which is the live quiz with leaderboard. We will have mixed bag clinical questions tomorrow. Okay, we will have mixed bag clinical questions tomorrow. And then 10 p.m. It's going to be alternate days on the app and on the YouTube channel, right? So, today our YouTube session is 10 o'clock. Tomorrow, we will have a special class at 10 p.m. And you know that I'm always open to your feedbacks, to your request for particular topics. Do let me know if there is any particular topic that you want me to cover. We can definitely work upon that now that we have enough time to work on multiple topics, right? So that's for today. Goodbye. Thank you. Take care. Keep studying, keep revising and keep winning. See you tomorrow at 5 p.m. on the Unacademy app and at 10 p.m. on the Unacademy app. Thank you so much, everyone.